Hey y'all, this lesson is on the critical value approach to hypothesis testing. So in my previous video, we looked at setting up the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. And then now we're going to get into actually testing a value. So the first approach, there's two approaches, the critical value approach and the p-value approach. Uh, they basically give you the same answer, they're just two different approaches. So the critical value approach basically sets up a cutoff point based on your significance level. And so if something is past this cutoff point, this critical value, then we can reject the null. So let's look at that really quick. <laughs> so I already mentioned that the critical value gives us a cutoff point based on the significance Room. level of the hypothesis test and the significance level relates to the alpha value and the decision whether to reject the null hypothesis or not is based on the comparison of the value of the test statistic to the cutoff point and this cutoff point is your critical value so based on the significance level, we have a critical value. And if the statistic that you're testing is outside or in the, oh, we'll talk about in a second, rejection zone of the critical value, based on the critical value, then you that's how you make your decision. So we're saying based on the significance level, which is based on the confidence level, we're setting up this cutoff point. And if anything's past the cutoff point, then we can reject the null. The value of the test statistic and the uh, critical value set up, sets up two different regions. So we're going to have a rejection region. And if anything falls within the rejection region, then we reject the null. And then we have the non-rejection region, which means that we don't reject the null. Remember, we never accept. We just don't reject it. Okay. So I have some little examples here about what it looks like. Um, we're going to do some shading here. We're not going to have an actual critical value. We're just, I'm just going to make one up to kind of show you what it looks like. So remember a two-tailed test means that we're not equal to. So this could be um, different than or not equal to those were the that was the wording that was used and this sets up two regions so it's a two-tailed test and i'm just going to kind of make up uh, where that is we'll say here needs to be symmetric over here anything this is our two-tailed test Anything outside of this region here. So let me just write that down. This is non-rejection. And then these two purple pieces are the rejection regions. So if uh, let's say these are my critical values here. Those would be some sort of z-score, um, maybe maybe negative 1.65 or something, 645. And we have some data, and we've gathered some statistics on it, and we pull a statistic, and we find the z-score of the statistic. If the z-score is past the critical value, then it is in the rejection region, which means that you reject the null. <clears throat> if it's in here, then we're good. We cannot reject the null. But if it's in these two regions, we reject the null. So that's our rejection zone. And then we have a right-tailed test. This was greater than. So it's going to be a greater than. And we would pick a critical value based on the significance level. We don't just pick a random one. 
And here's our rejection. So this is non rejection. And this is rejection. So we have our significance level. Our significance level decides our critical value. And then we have a test statistic. So we get a Z score for the test statistic. And if the Z score is out here, then we reject. And then the last one, <clears throat> excuse me, is less than. That was a one tailed test. And this would be non rejection. And this would be rejection. So this is like uh, your alpha. The purple, the shaded area is your alpha. That's based on your significant level. And so in the two tailed test, those are going to be alpha over two, the shaded regions, because we split them up. If the test statistic falls within the rejection region, we reject the null hypothesis. And that's why it's really helpful sometimes to, not sometimes, I do it all the time, but to draw this picture. And that can help you decide where your test statistic is. So you have your little number line down at the bottom and you have your little shading. And that way it's really easy to see, oh, this is in the rejection region, so we're gonna reject. So next page, I have a table here with some examples. You're gonna practice uh, using symbols and the language for hypothesis testing. So I'll do the first one with you and then I'll let you guys do the next two and we'll let you check it. We've got a picture here. And in this picture, we have some important information. Uh, this one actually already tells you where we're not rejecting and where we are rejecting, but this will help you set up your answers. So this is my rejection region. This value down here is our critical value. That's the cutoff point based on this significance level. This value is alpha. And alpha is your significance level in percentage form. So the inequality expressing this rejection region is we're saying that if uh, is if anything is greater than the mean. So we're going to be using greater than. So we're shaded to the right. And then anything in the non-rejection, if something is smaller than this value, it's a non-reject. So basically what I'm saying here is uh, this region, the rejection region, represents greater than our critical value. And the non-rejection region represents values less than. And then our critical value is 1.751. And this is a right-tailed test. So that's all it's asking for. Go ahead and try the next two and come back. I just noticed I did make a teeny little mistake up on the first example. Um, if the test statistic is equal to the cutoff point, uh, it's also in the rejection region. So that's my bad. You might have to go change your other answers. Uh, so the next one we have, the rejection region is less than or equal to the critical value. I should write that. Let's write that. And the non-rejection region would be greater than the critical value. Our critical value in this case is negative 2.054. Our alpha level is 0 0.02. So that means that the significance level is 2%. And then this is a left tailed test. So we're saying if we have a test statistic that lies in this little 2% region, then we have sufficient evidence to 
reject the null. Or uh, the test results were statistically significant, which means that if, it, if something's down here in the bottom 2%, then that's significant. If it's not, then it's not statistically significant and we don't reject the null. And then this last one, the rejection region, this is gonna be a little different. We're gonna have two different inequalities. It can be uh, less than or equal to, I should put Z's up here, Z score, less than or equal to negative 1.881 or Z score is greater than or equal to 1.881. We have two regions here. Sorry, got a little lazy up there. We're talking about a Z score when we're talking about this inequality. And the non rejection zone is in between these two critical values. Oh, darn it. I'm going to run out of room here. Sorry, guys. There we go. One over to the other box, but it's okay. I know what I mean. And since we used equal to for the rejection region, we cannot use equal to in the non rejection. It can't be in both. So if our test statistic is equal to our cutoff point, then we, we can reject it. And then this cutoff point is negative 1.881 or 1.881. This was, okay, be careful here because remember that these two little pieces represent alpha over two. So together, let's see, 0 0.015 represents our, our alpha level split up. So our, our alpha level, it's hard to say, is 0 0.03, which is a 3% significance significance level i'm having trouble talking and we split it up so it's a two tailed test so we have an example down here i want you to pause it and just try it and then come back it usually helps to go ahead and draw the picture and then based on your picture, you can figure out the rest of the problem. So this is a two-tailed, I think, yeah, two-tailed test with alpha equals 0.10. So if I just kind of estimate, um, you know, it's going to be two-tailed. I can change this in a second once I get my critical point. Then that means that my alpha is going to be split up. Since alpha equals 0.10, alpha over 2 equals 0.05. This is an area, 0.05. So this area here is 0.05, and this area here is 0.05. This is going to help me find the z-score associated with that area. So remember to do that, you can use your z-tables. And we're, the Z tables represent the area to the left. So you're going to find this piece here, 0.05, and you'll come up with a Z score there. And then its symmetric one would be the positive of that. Or you can use your calculator. You can go to second VARS, look at inverse norm, and our area is 0.05, mean of zero, standard deviation of one, because this is a standard normal curve. And I believe it's negative 1.645, yeah. Which makes this one positive 1.645. And I was right in my estimation, so that's good. And I'm gonna go ahead and shade it since I was right where I thought that would be. And now we can answer the rest. So our rejection 
regions. We have two rejection regions. If our test statistic is less than or equal to negative 1.645, or if our test statistic is greater than or equal to positive 1.645, we can reject the null, which makes our non-rejection in the middle, the white area. So that's between our two critical values, which obviously that's our critical value. So our critical values are negative 1.645 and 1.645. And then our significance level, I'm running out of room here, sorry, is based on alpha, written as a percent. So 10% significance level. That is all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'll be happy to help. See you later.